Hey guys, welcome back to Phil Plays TCG. Today, we are going over the Vegeta Daima or Vegeta Mini deck list. I didn't realize this deck had been revealed as of yesterday as well. There's a couple new cards I want to go over and um, see where this starter deck kind of ranks among the previous ones we've gotten so far. Uh, so let's just hop into the video here. Just a quick shout out, make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you do like Dragon Ball Future World content. We do a lot of that here. We're on our way to 2,500 subs and we've been doing very, very well lately. Uh, and I really do appreciate you guys so much. Uh, sorry, I know I said we're gonna hop in the video. YouTube stuff out of the way, let's talk about this deck here. So we have the blue Vegeta mini starter deck. Basic front side ability, he awakens at four, draws one. Uh, when he swings in, he draws one. But the back side is where this gets interesting here. So, we still have the draw one when attacking, but on the activate main, once per turn, you may uh, tap one, switch his card. Uh, sorry, I was just reading that. It's super early here too, by the way, I'm sorry. Uh, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards to the cost of one or less and place at the bottom of its owner's deck. Now, right off the bat, when I saw this, I was like, this is an awful ability. Just without looking at the other cards, this is an awful ability. Because by the time you're awakened, what things are you really going to be hitting that cost one or less? Your opponent's really not going to be playing a lot of one-drop cantrips uh, as often as they do in the early game. So having this ability really is kind of bad. But I'm hoping that we do see some of the new cards that can help uh, lower the cost. We have seen the new Daima Vegeta from the main set, set four, and that one was able to reduce things by two uh, once per turn. So that's super cool. So hopefully we get some more in the starter deck here. So this leader is going to heavily depend on the support it gets. So let's hop into uh, the first of 11 cards, I believe we are gonna be looking at here. We have Krillin, a four cost 30K body. Love that they're giving Krillin boss stats. Uh, 5K combo. When attacking, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and reduce its cost by one for the turn. All right, so we are already seeing some ability to lower cost, which only by one, but it is a pretty big attacker, so 30k is going to be uh, the going to be a pretty decent amount to swing in for. Now, of course, playing against other blue decks, this is not going to survive as four costs are pretty easy to get rid of for the most case against blue. But other decks might have a problem with this. But so far, so good. But I do hate the fact that once again we are stuck behind that stupid seven or less cards and hand restriction. It really needs to go. That's just a personal thing, though. <clears throat> Next up, we have Android 18, a three cost 20k body uh, with 10k combo power. Uh, permanent. During your opponent's turn, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, this card gets an additional 10k power. So, on uh, defensively, this card is a 30k body, which is really, really cool. On play, add up to one card from your life to your hand. So, once again, we got the seven or fewer cards in hand requirement, and this card is a self awakener. So a three cost 20k body, not great, but defensively being a 30k, three for 30k, that's better, but only if you have seven of your cards in hand. So I don't know. I, I'm not a huge fan of that. Next, we have one drop trunks mini. He's just our one drop cantrip for the deck. Next, we have three cost 20k Piccolo. We have seen this card once before, but I'll just do a quick refresher. He's a three cost 20k body with 10k combo power. On play, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and reduce its cost by one for the turn. Then, if your opponent has a battle card with a cost of two or less, draw one. So you can work with your Krillin. Um, actually, no. You're, well, actually, no, you, I'm sorry, you can. Krill, you play Krillin first, then play this. So you can't even play it on curve. You can't play this on three and then Krillin on four. Krillin's ability will allow him, every time he swings in, to hit something, uh, minus something by one. Piccolo comes into play. You then are able to minus something again by one. And if it happens to be a four cost and you get it down to two or less, you can draw a card. Mm, I don't know. Uh, I, I feel like I got to see more of the, of the set. So more of the stack here. Uh, here we go. Bulma Mini, two cost, 5k body with 10k combo power on play. Look at the top, look at the top two cards. Sorry, look at the two cards on the top of your deck and add one to your hand. Then place the rest at the bottom of its owner's deck. So you essentially scrying like you draw draw two put one back or sorry bottom deck one and then draw one 
the stat line is real bad. Like a two cost for a 5k body sure it's got 10k combo power, but this thing ain't lasting on the board if you're playing against red. Absolutely not. Um, mm, I don't know. Interesting. That allowing you to set up your, your next couple plays. And here we have the super rare of the deck, which is the uh, Vegeta. He is a five cost, 35k body, similar stat lines to the original uh, Vegeta super uh, super rare. Next, we have it is double strike, so keep it on uh, same stat lines as the original one. On play, choose into one of your opponent's battle cards with the cost of three or less and place it at the bottom of its owner's deck. Then, if you have seven of your cards in your hand, draw one. Now, I know right off the bat, I thought this card is just a worse version of the previous card because hitting a four cost feels a lot better than hitting a three cost, but in certain situations, being able to draw a card is very, very helpful, especially. Especially if you, like with the Bulma card, you're able to look at the top. Um, actually, no, you're not looking at the top card because you're putting that you're putting that card back. Huh. Oh, well, I mean, drawing a card's still good. Drawing a card can really be good. So this will be very dependent on what style of deck you're playing. If you feel you, you can easily hit, you know, make a lot of cards become less than three cost, this card's better. But if you don't think you can, the original Vegeta Double Striker is better. Next, we have Marin, a one cost 5k a ba a battle card with 5k combo. On play, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, look at the top card of your deck and place it at the top or bottom of its owner's deck, then draw one. So this allows you to essentially look at the top card. If it's something good, you can draw it. If you don't like it, you can bottom deck it and still draw another card. That's not awful. Like, in a weird way, it's almost better than Cantrip Trunks. But this one specifically, you still have to have seven or fewer cards in hand, which I'm seeing a very big trend in this deck so far, is they're really leaning into the seven card, uh, seven costs or less. So, I don't know how I feel about that. It's interesting for sure. <clears throat> Ooh, here we go. A two cost 20k Majin Buu Mini with a uh, 10k combo power. On play, look at, sorry, add a, a one card from your life to your hand. Then look at the top card of your deck and place at the top or bottom of its owner's deck. So you're once again, you're looking at setting the, up the top card of your deck. Okay, where's the, is there, I'm assuming there has to be a payoff of some kind. Like why are so many cards allowing me to look at the top card of my deck? Hmm, uh, but it is a, it is a self-awakener which blue could use a little bit more of. So, interesting. It's decent stat lines, too. A 2 cost 20k body with 10k combo power. That's not bad. Next up, we have Hercule Mini. A 2 cost 10k body with 10k combo power. It is a blocker. Mm, low cost blockers are not good in this game. We've already established that. But on play, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and reduce its cost by one for the turn. Okay, so... We have another card that lowers cost, but it's always by one. Mm, I mean, I get it. Hitting two, hitting something for two is going to be a lot better, but uh, I don't know. How much planning are you going to have to do to set this up? Uh, but overall, pretty bad stat lines. This is easily going to be KO'd by anything in red. Um, blue, easily get rid of it. And with red being a very dangerous thing in next set, um, I don't know. Not a fan of it. Uh, next, we have Vegeta's Battle Armor. A one cost extra, activate main, choose it to one of your opponent's battle cards and reduce its cost by one for the turn. Okay. Then if your leader has Vegeta in its card name, draw one. Okay. So basically, a, a minus something for one, for one. And then if your leader is Vegeta, you draw a card. That doesn't have the seven of cards or less requ uh, requirement. So, that's not, it's interesting. So I think it's a good card. I mean, you only have it, you can only use it in Vegeta Mini or Starter Deck Vegeta. I don't know, that's uh, interesting. We only have one card left of this deck and I'm, I'm not seeing what the big payoff is, hold on. Finally, we have Proud Saiyan, a one cost extra activate battle during your opponent's turn. Your cards that are in a battle get 20,000 power for the battle. 
Then, if you have seven or fewer cards in your hand, draw one. So a one cost buff by 20 is huge. It's only defensively though, but you also get to draw a card. Okay, so in a weird way, this is a slightly better Gallic gun. Well, Gallic gun allows you to be offensive and defensive, but being having that little extra bump in defense, hmm, that's interesting. I don't like the way it's worded though. Your cards that are in a battle get plus 20k power. So it, it makes, how I read this is it makes it seem like there's gonna be multiple cards in battle, but there's only one at a time. Um, I think this is a really interesting card. Like I said, it's just a better Gallic gun in some ways, but I mean like there's black Kamehameha, which also does something similar, but allows you to look at the top three. Rearrange top three, I should say. Is that it? Yep, uh, that's that's it for new cards. Uh, you do get reprints of Goku, Mai, Goten, and Videl super combo. But basically, these are your new cards. And um, honestly, I'm feeling a little underwhelmed. These, I don't see what the point was. For a lot of these cards that allow you to look at the top card or rearrange cards on top of your deck. Like, what? what's the point? What's the payoff? There's There's no payoff. There's no big card that's like, oh, you could look at the top card. If it's this, play it. Or if it's the, if it's this, do that. Like, hell, more of these kind of help the Satan City archetype because you need to know what the top card of your deck is for that. But they don't synergize with the... They don't synergize with Satan City. So my favorite cards out of this are definitely Krillin being, you know, big body that lets you minus something. Um, the Marin, surprisingly, is pretty good. Majin Buu's got pretty decent stat lines. Vegeta's Battle Armor is an interesting card, as well as the Proud Saiyan. Um, I don't know. Kind of weird. I don't know how I feel about this. You know, maybe combining it with some of the newer cards that we got in set four, but I just don't see where this leader is going to have any significant payoff. Like, you have the four cost, sorry, the, the two cost Vegeta that minus something by two on a swing. You have the Krillin, which minuses it by one. So that's three. Um, you could use the Vegeta's battle arm by four. So you minus something by four. Cool. Like, there are better cards, or at least there's cards that can do what you're trying to do, but are a lot easier to play, like Absolute Lightning. Um, you still have great removal pieces, but, like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'm just missing something, or maybe I'm just not seeing exactly what this deck can do yet. But, uh, yeah. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below of the Vegeta Daima starter deck. I'm, I'm super excited to get my hands on these cards and start testing. But, I don't know. I feel like I'm missing something. But, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys.